All right, hey guys, uh, we're here with the third episode of Cage Side Combos. We're coming to you live from American Top Team here in Watertown. I'm Rick. And I'm Quince. Hope you guys have been enjoying your Tuesday morning so far and been able to ease right back into the week, you know, after, uh, after the weekend. Um, I don't know, I, I had a pretty productive weekend for the most part, um, but, you know, it certainly took a lot out of me, so I was sure, sure, sure. telling Rick about that earlier. Um, and so it's, it's a real ease. This is almost like my Monday. <laughs> my, Monday didn't exist for me. Uh, so this is kind of my money. But yeah. uh, I hope you guys are all doing well today. Um, today on the episode on episode three, like you mentioned, um, we're actually going to be talking about being more goal oriented and goal, uh, having more of a goal mindset. And, you know, week to week, uh, we're never actually sure what we're going to talk about next. You know, we sit down and we chat. And we try and figure it out. And uh, we were going back through uh, the last two episodes, the first two episodes, and we talked a lot about purpose, you know, creativity and vulnerability and things like that. And, um, you know, it seems that goal setting uh, was kind of the next topic that we needed to touch base on. Uh, I think uh, when I talk about trusting in the process or the process itself, I think that uh, it epitomizes being goal oriented. I mean, that is setting up a group of goals uh, to knock out in order to reach a final, you know, destination. So, um, on the topic of the goals, uh, you brought up a good point. You said there are different types of goals. You said there were tangible goals and intangible goals. Sure. And tangible goals, I. You know, everybody seems to know what those are, but I think yeah. intangible goals, just the, uh, the, the, the term was new to me. Sure. So uh, how, how would you define those? Okay, yeah, so um, tangible, the, I mean, going with the literal definition where tangible is something you can touch, something you can feel. Right. Um, so a tangible goal, uh, to be you know, very superficial with it, would be like, uh, I want a new car, I want a new truck, I want a house, okay. I want a jet ski, I want money, I want fame and fortune, you know what I mean? These, these things that you can quantify, things that you can touch, things that you can feel, you know? Um, and when I really started exploring this, uh, looking at long-term goals, um, so people who are successful, I think people who are successful have long-term goals that are a little more intangible. Um, more things like uh, um, personal enrichment, uh, community enrichment, helping others, um, things that you can't ever really quantify things you can't really put a number on things you can't necessarily hold um and as i explored it more it's it's uh they're goals that i think you never fully reach right um so something i found myself focusing on uh something i, I really want to accomplish in life is, is kind of making a difference for other people you mm -hmm. know um and yeah like kind of here and there especially the more the more i dive into day one and the more i open up and explore and stuff the more i find um here and there people will be like oh man you know this post you shared or something you said and, and one of the things you wrote kind of spoke to me a little bit kind of made a difference which is is cool you know but it's uh i don't foresee myself ever fully feeling comfortable with okay i can check this box off that i made a difference for people right so um whereas a tangible goal uh again is like all right well I, you know, I made X amount of money, I, I have a house, I have a car, uh, I have these things. And the problem with tangible goals is once you check that box is they're done. You okay. know, I mean, unless your goal is like, I wanna buy new cars every day for the rest of my life. And then that's something, but you, you still, you know, can quantify it, right? Sure. Um, so then it uh, kind of understand, you know, so you, right then you just understand the difference between tangible and intangible. And like I said, for me, the intangible goals seem to end up being the long-term goals, seem to end up being what most people would define as maybe their purpose, mm -hmm. like the reason they're here. Um, you know, so maybe for you it would be like uh, community involvement. Um, sure. You know, obviously, you know, whatever way you're kind of using your art and stuff like that. Yeah, right? so intangible goal would be um, creating a scene that was open to uh, hip hop and multiple types of music sure, rather than just sure. a single individual. Sure, sure, sure. Right. No, no, I definitely understand that. Right. Um, and you know, again, that's kind of hard to, that's hard to really quantify. You know, because I mean, you, you know, maybe you'll have someone come up to you and be like, "Oh man, you know, I, I heard, you know, I heard this, you know, this track with you know you and this guy on it, and it was, you know, it was cool shit." And now, like hip hop, now I've been exploring hip hop a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, 
yeah, that's kind of, you know, that's a tangible goal. That's a check mark. Like, okay, well, I, I got this one individual, but just because you spoke to one person doesn't mean your scenes there, doesn't mean your, your long-term goal, doesn't mean your purpose is fulfilled, doesn't mean you check that box off and stop trying. You sure. know what I mean? So it's still, um, you know, I don't think anything you ever fully hold in, in its complete stage, right? Yeah, no, I, I can see that. So uh, is a tangible goal almost like the motor or the driving force for the tangible goals? Yeah, so yeah, kind of, um, I think uh, I think the driving force between the intangible goal, I think it's kind of a, a self-motivating thing, a self-propagating thing, right? So you, you have this intangible goal and that's what you're working for. You have this purpose, right? Mm -hmm. You have this long-term goal and that's what you work towards. What I, how I like to think of the tangible goals is uh, kind of like trail markers, okay. right? So um, we have a general idea of where we're going, you know, kind of the metaphor being where we're climbing this mountain mm -hmm. and it's, it's foggy. You know, we can't necessarily see the top. We know it's there. Right. Um, but it, when you have a long-term goal like that, or when you have something that you, you know, an intangible goal, uh, kind of a general purpose in life, it's easy to lose sight of like, shit, am I going the right way? You right. know? Um, so these trail markers, these, these little tangible goals uh, are kind of like the trail markers, mm -hmm. you know? So you, you say, okay, well, if like once somebody comes to me and says, hey man, that was a really cool post. Or like for me, uh, when you're using Facebook and, and somebody likes something that you, that you share, that's something you can quantify, that's a tangible goal. Like, okay, this person liked it, or this person shared it. That's an easy way to track and see, like, okay, I'm definitely, at least in a small way, making a right. difference. Right, that's progress. Right. Um, another metaphor I really like, especially coming from a martial arts background, uh, so like with jujitsu, um, it's a very long-term process. And the first day you start jujitsu, they tell you if you want your black belt, usually on average, it's a 10-year commitment. Mm -hmm. You're gonna train for 10 years before you get your black belt. So the day you start, 10 years from now, you're gonna get your black belt. And that is incredibly overwhelming. Like, what the hell is it gonna to take to get there? Sure. You know, and, and the first time you meet a black belt, the first time you train with a black belt, you just get smashed, you have no fucking idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it seems impossible, I'm never gonna get that good. You break that down, well, okay, well, there's, there's tiers in, in the belt system, there's mm -hmm. tiers in the ranking system, so white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black belt, okay? Okay, okay, that seems a little more feasible, right? So now, blue belt, year and a half to two years it takes to get there. And again, on your first day of training, you train with a blue belt and you just get smashed and you have no idea what the hell you're doing and that mm -hmm. seems impossible because you can't fathom all the things that they're doing that are shutting you down, the way they're controlling you, submitting you and all, all these things, right? So it's impossible to comprehend. Well, you break that down even further. So to get, you know, between each belt ranking, there's a striping system, right? Mm -hmm. So after X amount of time, X amount of experience, whatever, you get one stripe on your white belt, then two stripes, three stripes, four stripes, then you're eligible for your next belt rank. Right? So now you, you've broken down this 10-year this process into you know, six to eight or 12-month increments, right? Shorter-term goals, right. And, and these are very tangible goals. Right. You know, so I, I know when my coach puts on my, a stripe on my belt that I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. you know? So now it becomes something you can quantify and something you can track. So I think, um, again, I think the motor behind an intangible goal is the goal itself. Oh. Is that fulfillment? Is that dedication to reach that goal? But you can use those intangible goals as markers along the way. Like, okay, I you know I got I got a stripe, or I, you know I got a shirt, I got right. you know this, you know I got a like uh, somebody bought a CD, somebody bought a T-shirt, you know what I mean? Like these little things here and there. Like okay, um, this is working, mm -hmm. right? And so you can use these intangible goals as steps. Sure. You know, work up that path. And I think uh, something you mentioned a couple times, and one of the most important parts of these goals is not just uh is of course the 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 vision or the visualization of the goal right. and you want to be as specific as possible to yourself um you know as far as defining that goal uh but it is the breakdown yeah. you know because you know often i find myself multitasking a lot or sure. you know my thoughts sometimes they become scattered if i think if your goal is too um <laughs> uh, is, is is too vague you know, your, your thoughts become scattered and sure. you don't know where to start, you don't know where it's gonna finish. Yeah. Uh, so being able to break that down and being as specific as possible about each step, uh, I think is, it, it makes everything so much easier. Sure. And it makes it seem uh, that much more obtainable. Right, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's an important thing too is, um, you know, so you, know, you, trust, you trust in the process. Well, what's the process? 
or the process is I, I want to get to this goal, right? And this intangible goal, and there's you know all these ups and downs and stuff, but and like you said, your thoughts start getting scattered. You start, you know, say it's been a while since you've hit a tangible goal, since you've seen one of your trail markers, and you start getting lost a little bit. You get lost in the fray, um, and being able to define a specific goal that you know, okay, well, I, I feel lost, I feel suffocated, I, I'm never going to achieve this long-term thing, I, I'm not making the right steps. You define a very specific goal in the process of, okay, if I can just get to this next goal, at least I know I'm still moving in the right direction. I'm still exactly. going going up that mountain. You right. know what I mean? Um, and yeah, and, and, and sometimes it's hard, man. Sometimes it's hard to really define that goal or to know what, you know, what that next specific goal is, you know, right. and, and accepting that it's part of the process, you know, expecting that lull, that plateau, mm -hmm. you know, we all you know, always say, you know, success is in a straight line, you know, go up for a little bit and then you go, you stay in, maybe you go back down, maybe you feel like sure. you're going down, you know, but you step back, you look at the big picture overall, you know, it's, it's always trending upward. Um, but going back to that, setting a specific goal and kind of knowing, okay, well, it, even if I get this one little thing, that's still a step forward, that's still forward progress. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can make a difference and it can make the process and the whole experience seem less overwhelming. For sure. Right? Yeah. I, uh, w when I was first um, putting Hold On Upstate together, uh, you know, this was a business and I, sure. I, didn't, I didn't have any prior experience in business, certainly sure. not holding my own. Um, so I went back to school out to JCC yep. and I still had a couple jobs. I was still doing, you know, shows and gigs and things like that. Um, and so it was a lot going on all at once. And I, I mean, I'll be the first to admit I'm a procrastinator, man. Yep. I, I really am. And I, you know, I, I work on being better, but in order to get every single thing done, especially when it's last minute, uh, I had to sit down. And all the work, it was, it was, you know, time for finals and everything yeah, was yeah. due. And I had to jot down everything that was going on from shows to work to, to the, um, you know, to the exams and the, yeah. all the finals I had to turn in. I had to write it down right in front of me and I had to break it down. So I would start at the end point. I'd start at that goal sure. and I'd be able to step backwards mm -hmm. one step at a time and lay out what I needed to do to get to that level. Right. And by the time you break it down, and you're at that very first step, you've got it all laid out for you. Right, right, right. And for me, uh, I'm sure people have other tactics that might work for their personality type, but for me, I, I need to visualize, I need to see it right in front of me. Sure. Um, so it's just not lost, as you say, in the ether. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Yep. Yeah, that, uh, um, I, kind of, I like that metaphor of uh, all you need are pictures, or is a picture in the pieces, you know what I mean? So like, uh, when you have a puzzle, a literal puzzle that you're putting together, right. a lot of times we have that box, you know, and you, and you look at the box, you say, this is the final picture, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then you start, you know, put together the border, right, and then you find these pieces and you can start putting them in little by little, you know, but you know, like you said, you have that visual of exactly mm -hmm. what you need, you know, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes when you start, even when you start working backwards, you're like, okay, well, I just need all of these pieces, and right. you might you might not know where they're going to come from or how they're going to fit together necessarily, uh, but having them and being able to know kind of where to start, mm -hmm. you know, okay, well, I, I got to fill my border and that's my first step, you know, but you, you work backwards from there, okay, if I want to get to this big picture, you know, start here, yeah. right? Um, yeah, and that's absolutely uh, excellent for, for making it seem less kind of overwhelming. You yeah. Know? That kind of notion of um, when you have so much going on that mm -hmm. you don't do anything. Right? Oh right. my gosh, I have so much to do. I have, like you said, I have exams, I have shows, I have this, I have that, I got bills to pay, I got three jobs, I got all this stuff to do. Right. They paralyze. Sure. Right? And you just don't, you end up not doing anything. And, you then, don't know where and then you fall back in those old oh, so what do you do? You, yeah. you turn on the TV or you go yeah. hang out with your friends yeah, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. go to the yeah. bar. You know, so to be able to, you know, like I say, it's so important to be able to uh, define these specifically sure. in, in a language that you understand in its most simplistic form. Right. So right, there's right. no, you know, there's no other way to justify it other than, the, you know, right. than being that direct. Right. right. Um, yeah, it, it's so necessary. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Um, so as far as, let me see, we got tangible, we got intangible, all stemming from purpose. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, I mean, it's got to be, 
I would say when you, another important thing about setting up goals is you have to have some sort of a timeline. Right. Um, because if you don't have a specific time in which you're trying to get it done, I mean, you, you could just go on forever. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. It's like sure. uh, uh, playing a game of one-on-one -on -one with no, right. you know, with no specific right. score. Right. Play right. to 100. Right. Um, so I, I think that's important, especially if you do want to uh, progress forward. Right. Um, you know, it's having a timeline with that. Well, and uh, kind of like you said, you personally are a procrastinator. Mm -hmm. I know I've fallen victim to it many times mm -hmm. in my life. Um, and, man, I, I don't honestly think, I don't think I've ever had a, a serious conversation with somebody who's goal-oriented that would not classify themselves as a procrastinator. A lot of people say, I work better under pressure. And you have that time frame, you know, um, kind of that old mantra of, uh, when you, when you have time to do things, you don't do anything. Right. You know, but when you're busy as hell, when you have to figure out how to squeeze everything in to, exactly. a, you know, a very finite time period, all of a sudden you, you recognize the necessity to be proactive. Sure. Right. So um, when you say time sensitive, like, yeah, okay, in one week, I have to have this thing done. Mm -hmm. Because if you just say, you know, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to do this. Like you said, you just when well i don't have to do it today i don't right. have to do it today and, and some people are great at that some people are great at saying i don't have to do this today but i'm going to because it needs to be done eventually mm -hmm. right and, and sometimes that's enough and i mean for me sometimes that's enough like okay well i don't have to do this today but i have the time and i'm going to mm -hmm. you know feel like it but um yeah setting that like very specific time frame now the downside to that is unfortunately is sometimes like those things are out of our control sure you know sure. um so again, going back to the martial arts metaphor for me, uh, you know, I've been, uh, so I've been a blue belt for uh, almost three years. Um, and when I got my blue belt, I was like, I'm gonna work my ass off, I'm gonna get my purple belt in two years. Well, yeah, that was a great goal at the time. And what ended up happening was I started getting distracted. I started branching out more into Muay Thai and I started refocusing on like strength and conditioning, you know, things that I had started with, things that I was passionate about. And for me to achieve that, you know, two year goal, I would have had to focus and only train Jiu Jitsu, mm -hmm. right? Well, um, certain necessities and then certain desires, you know, cropped up and I shifted my focus elsewhere. So right. yeah, I had this great, this noble goal. And then after that two year, as that two year time frame was approaching, I knew that I was going to achieve that. You sure. know? So a little bit frustrating, but I think it's very necessary to understand the change too. And right. so like if your time goal changes, there has to be a reason for it. There has, you know, and you have to understand it, you have to be okay with that reason, mm -hmm. right? So like, while I didn't necessarily accomplish the one goal I set, I had to shift my goals and shift my thinking and understand, okay, well, yes, this time sensitive goal wasn't met, but there were other goals that I achieved in time. So I sacrificed one goal to focus on a couple different areas, you know? So, sure. um, and be kind of being forgiving with yourself and understanding that as we go, you know, our, the way of prioritize things, especially over a two year time span, is not always gonna be consistent for that full two years, you know, and priorities yeah. will shift, uh, life will shift, necessities will shift, you know? So, um, I really like the time sensitive stuff for very short term goals. Time one sensitive, week, short term? One month, yeah, right. it's, I, I feel um, it's a little more realistic. Mm -hmm. Right, because things are a little more planning is a little bit easier over small time frames. Right. right, you look two, three years down the line. That's where I go more with purpose-driven goals, more intangible goals. Like in two or three years, I want to make sure that I'm two or three years further along this this progress, this right. process, or towards ultimately this intangible goal. I want to see trail markers all along the way to know I'm on the right path. Right, you know? right. Um, and again, I mean that works for me. Some people are amazing at setting long-term goals and sticking to them. Yeah, you know, and I have. A lot of admiration for people who can do stuff like that. Yeah, kudos to them. I uh, yeah. I certainly was not goal oriented before I was a procrastinator. You know what I mean? Sure. It sure, almost sure, the sure. goal orient orientation almost came out came out of like a survival. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah. I was definitely procrastinator first, and sure. still, you know, still am. But yeah. um, setting goals and at this point now trusting that process right. helps me get out of some of those slumps. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. I, I like how you mentioned something about. Um, you were working towards certain goals uh, only to find out maybe that wasn't where you wanted to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, there was a certain point in time where I took all my attention and I focused on trying to get signed. 
by sure. by major uh, uh, you know larger labels. Sure. And I thought that's where I'm like, well, that's I guess that's why I'm here. You know, I'm a musician. If I get signed, um, if I am given a whole bunch of money, uh, that um, validates it. That validates what I do. Yeah, right, or, you know, or so right, I thought. Right. But I, I took all you know the 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 steps. You know, I read up on getting signed and what it was like and what you needed to do in order to stand out from other people. Right. So I had, uh, you know, went out to California yeah. for a while and I would. Uh, send out my CDs. I'd walk up and down Colorado Boulevard out in Santa Monica, you know, where, you know, Island Records and Def Jam and all these other places. Uh, and I thought that's what I was here for. And, you know, I had some interactions that that were complete. They wouldn't even look my way. I didn't have sure. a million views and it looked my way, but still, you know, I had certain goals I wanted to meet. So I'm like, until I, until I get signed, I'm going to keep pushing in this way. And it wasn't until I had come back here that I finally got in touch with someone out of Florida. And he flew up for a show. Uh, we threw a Halloween show at Magnus. Yeah. And I, uh, it was a mixed show. It was us and Chive. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is to get paid to throw parties. Sure, sure. But, uh, but I mean, it was, a big, it was a big party, man. And this dude was, he, he flew up from Florida, landed in New York. And he drove from NYC up there. And I'm like, oh shit, this is it. This right. is everything that I've worked for. This is finally, and I didn't, I only told maybe a handful of people. Yeah. You know, the people that were in the know. And I'm like, this is everything I've worked for. My goals, uh, I'm about to accomplish them right now. The dude came up, he was in the crowd, loved everything. And we stayed in touch. And when he gave me the, the contract and I went through it and studied it and even talked with uh, uh, you know uh, a lawyer, uh, sure. a lawyer about it, yeah. who kind of like helped me define it, and I was like, damn, this isn't what I want to do at all. Right. All of my work, I don't want to sign away, right. you know, all of my time and effort and hard work to somebody who just met me for for a weekend, and we right. talked, you know, we I mean we'd been talking back and forth for like three or four months. Right. Um, but breaking down the contract, and even when we would revise it, I couldn't find a way to convince myself that this was the move. Right. And there was a certain point in time, I'm like, well shit, maybe I should just sign it anyway because I put in so much work and right. time for it. Right. So I'm like, and, and I'm, I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. I'm glad I still followed those steps through so I could understand that whole process. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, now I can avoid those little pitfalls that I think some people you know, get caught up in, yeah. or expectations for self, or sure. or the image of people sure. when they're signed, or what that looks sure. like. So, sure. um, I think just because you have certain goals, they're not, and they don't always have to get you where you think you're going to be. Right. But I think going through that whole process, you get to learn everything you are supposed to know that you are supposed to pull from this. Yes. And I think that's huge. Absolutely, absolutely, and. Um Sometimes, uh, and I've, I've heard people um, talk about this in various manifestations and stuff, but sometimes the only way to know what you really want, you have to find out what you don't want, which is, uh, unfortunately, I mean, you put a lot of effort into that. Like you said, you moved to California. Uh, sure. You know, you, you put on this party and you had like all these opportunities to present, you grinded and grinded and grinded, worked, worked so hard to have this right in front of you, have that contract right in front of you, and then not to sign it. That's frustrating. But you learn something so important about yourself. You learn, sure. you know, that's not what you wanted. Exactly. So now you can cross that off your list. And now we narrow down the, the scope of what, what right. do we want. Yeah, you know I mean? uh, it's, it's so true. And it was difficult because, like, I wasn't the only one that put in time. Uh, my friend who, uh, so the lawyer, yeah. he took hours out of yeah. his day to go through and revise right. the contract in ways that I thought might be a little bit more suitable. Right. So like there was just pressure coming yeah. from all angles yeah, yeah, about yeah. it. But yeah. you know, I was able to honestly be honest with myself yeah. um, and, <laughs> and take whatever came my way after that. Yeah. yeah good or bad. Yeah. Good or bad. So, and that's, that's so hard, man. It's so it's, hard to be honest hardest. with yourself, especially when, when you recognize what other people have done for you. And you recognize the sacrifices that other people made and, right. and the kindness that's been offered you, you know, and to to 
force yourself to be honest with yourself and to stay true to what sure. your vision is, uh, despite that, the possibility of letting other people down. You know? That's tough. Um, what's really hard, too, is so you make yourself step outside of that. And if you put yourself in your friend's position, so if you were the lawyer and you were helping your friend, mm -hmm. and you put in all this work, and then your friend came to you and said, I'm still not going to sign this contract because I don't feel like that's being true to me. Mm -hmm. You probably would have been like, all right, man, I completely understand. You sure. Know, do your thing. And, sure. And I think the people that genuinely want to see us succeed are always going to have that feeling. And right. they're, no matter what we do, as long as we do what's going to benefit us, right. as long as we stay true to ourselves, the people that are going to stay in our corner, the people that are with us for the long run, the people that want to see us succeed, are always going to be okay with that. Right. It doesn't matter how much time they put in. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, um, man when you're the one making that decision when you're the one that feels like you're letting people down yep. it's so hard to to understand that other people are genuinely okay with that mm -hmm. you know and if they're not you don't really want them around anyways sure you know so the the people that are going to support you are going to be okay with everything with every decision that you make as right. long as you are genuinely and honestly doing it for what you feel like is is your self-betterment right. right the people that care about you want to see you be better and want to see you grow um and that looks different ways sometimes, you know, sure. like again, for you, it, in that situation, it looked like turning down this contract, you know, it looked, and then you break down everything that you thought you knew. Right. Cause the whole time you're working, you're building, you know, you're, you're building the structure, all, all the building blocks you're putting in the pace, all your tangible goals are all along this track to get signed. Then right. once you get there and you realize that's not it, then boom, you have to completely deconstruct everything and right. start all over. Right. And that's one of the most painful recurring themes in life, especially learning what you want by learning what you don't want. Yeah. And that happens over and over yeah. and over again. But, you know, I think it adds to character. I think it, you know, fortifies your foundation, even though you're like, oh, I got to start back at square one. I mean, your square one is no longer down here. Right. You're square. It feels like square one because yeah. it is. But yeah. you're, you're in a whole different world. You've right. leveled right. up. Right. Um, Right. But, you know, it, it, truth be told, anytime you uh, accomplish a goal, you're back to square one. Right. You're not in the right. same place, but you're back to square one. Right. Um, it's uh, kind of the next And the process step starts the all step. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's not, and I don't say that to make it seem like a downer. No. You know, it's a good thing. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I like, uh, uh, Melissa, what you said there, everyone plays their role. Uh, maybe those people are there in your life to remind you that this isn't your path. Sure. Right? Um, yeah. And yeah, that's... Uh, so I... Using kind of like the grateful mindset and like the, the attitude the attitude of gratitude. I, right. It's probably a meme somewhere. <laughs> uh, but understanding the necessity of every single thing that happens. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, whether a person is a positive influence or negative influence, mm -hmm. understanding how to grow from that interaction. Right? Being grateful for that experience. And, um, you know, maybe... You know, maybe that person, you know, he's just there. And, like, you know, for you, that guy coming up from Florida was just a reminder that, all right, this, you know, shit, start over. Yeah. You know, but yeah. when you, you topple down all those blocks, you use those blocks as your foundation for the next thing. So, like mm -hmm. you said, gradually you're still building. You're still progressing. Absolutely. Right? Um, it feels like you have to start over because that the pain that comes with taking everything down. Right. You know, and you feel like you wasted your time, but... Moving, you know, again, moving forward is not a linear path. It's yeah. not a straight path. None of it was know? wasted. And, right. you know, and, and, and I think it helped uh, keeping a lot of it private. Because if I were, as yeah, soon as I got the yeah, offer, yeah, if I was yeah. quick to run and tell yeah. the internet or the whole world, hey, this is the attention we're getting. Right. This is how I'm going to spend the money. Do, right. you, know, right. you know, all the, all the artists or all the people around me, you know, we're about to yeah. start making moves. Yeah. Now, that's more pressure. Right. And right. it's harder to find... Uh, to recognize the right decision right, right. And, and move on that when everybody has an opinion on it sure because uh, you know you're right and uh, you know Missy's right too because the people in the know that I was letting them yeah uh, none of them held it against me sure, sure. not a single person yeah and I was the only one that was kind of you know beating myself up for it but um, yeah I mean that's that's true enough man well and uh so like once you start telling other people mm -hmm. and once you start bringing people in, you know, hey guys, we're in, cause you don't do anything by yourself. You know I mean? You're, you're an artist in your own right. But I mean, you got, you know, especially now you're out chasing lions. So you've got a few other guys in that band with you. Yeah. Uh, you got TMA, you got two other guys in that group. 
um, you've done tracks with I don't know however many dozens of people, right? Sure. So you know, as you're on the up, you you know, you're bringing other people with you. You're letting other people get kind of their pieces. You're going too. So in that situation, if you've been like, yo, you know, TMA, we're doing this, OCL, we're doing this, you know, all you guys are coming with me, you're going to the top, right? Now you've made a commitment to other people. You've committed to other people, right? You know, instead of like, you know, talking to your close group of friends and saying, hey guys, you know, this is what I got going on. This is a possibility. This is pretty cool. You know, sharing that. Uh, so once you've committed to other people, then you're kind of locked in. Whereas if you keep it private, right now you're only committed to yourself. Right. And then you have to have that internal dialogue, you know, and there's a few other people, um, but the choice people, you know, the people that you know are going to help you grow and that are going to be okay whether, you know, yes or no, they're still going to be by your side. Sure. Instead of getting committed to 50 different people and now all of a sudden, now you've got to answer questions. Now people are mad. Now you've promised people this and that. Exactly. You know? um, so there, I think there's a very important reason that we let self-growth happen for ourself mm -hmm. you know and i think that probably deep down there's a reason that you knew not to go too public with it sure. i think there's you know some doubt some uncertainty and stuff like a, a very specific reason you kept that you know in, right? yeah sure. yeah I and mean, you know when it stemmed from like you said you know around here in upstate you know to have your hand in a couple things that are starting to grow starting to flourish sure, sure. and um the possibility of that you know just being able to meet people through different aspects yeah. you know of uh you know of this music culture of this creative sure. creative culture i don't want to stick yeah. it just to music sure. um and for someone to sign your life away only for one of those reasons right and right, you right, lose right. the 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 connection right. and you know with all the rest of those aspects man it was tough yeah it was just something i didn't want to give up but man. um but it, it has it, it's changed the way that i set up my goals now right yeah. You know, I don't worry about what I think I am supposed to be working toward. Right, right, you know right, what I mean? Right. It's just being more honest with myself and I can better define these goals for myself right. and not for anyone else. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, and, it, and you know, and it helps. It helps a ton. And, yeah, absolutely. And now things start to pop up, like, like with the band, yeah. you know, uh, opportunities start to pop up that I couldn't have planned on beforehand. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, so it all seems like it's easy to see that that was the right choice right. at the time. Right. Kind of the understand the reason for it. Right. Um, and then when things like that happen, because it, you know, it's not the only time that's happened in your life, I would guess. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I know, man, I've had so many things, so many opportunities in my life pop up that fall through. Right. And at the time, you're like, oh, shit, man. Was like, did I make the right decision? But then a little bit down the road, you see the ripple effect of that and your life is better. Yeah. You know, so when that happens consistently, right, you, you have a negative, a, a perceived, you know, and even at the time, I mean, I'm sure you didn't perceive that as, you know, unilaterally negative, you know, it wasn't just a bad thing, but it took a while to make sense of it, you know, and then all right. of a sudden, you start to develop that trust in the process because it happens consistently and, happens, sure. and it happens reliably. Reliably. So now something bad happens, you know, and that, again, that grateful mindset of, okay, this is happening, but I'm okay with this. I like this. I'm accepting this. this mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I feel bad. This is a bad experience right now. But when we extrapolate, you know, when we look that further down the path, you know, find these ripple effects, something good is going to manifest from this. Sure. But that's the process. It's, sure. And it's not just a maybe because you've learned it and you trust that it's a definitive thing that's going to happen. Right. You know? Um, and if you're accepting of that, you know, kind of the, that mindset of, you're going to find whatever you're looking for. You know, right. if you go out looking for yellow cars, you're going to find them everywhere. If you go out looking for something good for, to happen from this, you know, negative incident, you're going to find it. It's there. You know, and, and it happens reliably and consistently if you have trust in it and, and you understand that it's necessity. Sure. You know, for sure. That's man. a great point. For sure. That's a great point. So. Um, Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, man. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, kind of just those, those small little the small little building blocks, right? And everything, kind of the, the purpose and the necessity of every every little step, you know, every step you take. I'm not gonna start singing. <laughs> so, yeah. Watch the views go up. Yeah, 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 up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 29 minutes in, Rick started singing to police. All right. <laughs> so that's, yeah. Man, if I'd known that, I would've started doing that two episodes there ago. There you go, there you go. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, man, um, I love it. Uh, you know, so being able to be focused, taking these small, intangible goals, 
work, you know, using small incremental steps, keep that purpose in mind, keep that picture in mind. Um, you know, and if you know where you want to end up, kind of, you know, we can work backwards from it. Yeah. Or uh, especially for me, when I start feeling like I'm lost, find little lights along that way, little markers along that path. To connect you know, the dots with. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah cause you know, I don't know, maybe it's relative, but sitting here and looking back now, yeah. Um, you see, it makes all the sense in the world. Right. It makes all the right, sense right. in the world. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, yeah. You know, um, it is. And, and trust in that process enough to know that eventually that 2020 hindsight's going to be like, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Awesome. Yeah, for awesome. sure. For sure. It's just part of the story. Absolutely. Part of the story. Absolutely. So, well, cool. um, what you got coming up? Ooh, coming up, man. Um, something. Yeah, we got uh, here at the gym. We got a, a seminar on Thursday night. Um, super cool dude. I've been uh, uh, exposed to a number of times. Henry Aikens, um, world class black belt, studied under Hicks and Gracie. Uh, which for some people that's gonna make sense for mm -hmm. you, uh, like real cool jujitsu stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of the big thing happening here at the gym, man. Uh, other than that, just classes. Little intangible goals. Sticking people keep, to the grind. Yeah, people keep showing up to classes, so I must be, you know, something must be going on here. That's right. For sure. Know? So that's my sure. little intangible goal every day. If somebody shows up to take a class to train, yeah. you know, so that's that's me. Yeah, that's part right? of, that's <laughs> part of my goal. That's part of my process yeah. is to make sure I stay active. Yeah, and absolutely. doing stuff that you know gets me out of my sure. comfort zone. Personal but, enrichment, man. Get you know, oh, get better everything. every day. Right? It's everything, yeah. man. So, um, you got anything happening on the music scene this weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got yeah. we have a couple shows. Uh, my drummer just hit me up, and we have uh, like a possible show coming up in the near future that could be big, but we can't say anything about it yet. Right. <laughs> uh, but the coolest one, the coolest one, is coming up on the 31st of August uh, for the Musical Fusion Fest yep. over at the Broken String, and it's going to be mixed genre again. Awesome. Um, so, I mean, you know it well. Yeah. I'm sure you've oh, been yeah. to all. This all, will be the yeah. seventh one. Yeah, yeah. Been in the seventh one, yeah. but it's the first time that it's been right in town right and accessible yeah, yeah. to everybody yeah. and the broken strings is a dope place absolutely um we've got so the band's going to be opening it up for rob sonic yeah uh, yeah, yeah who's 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 a big name if you guys get down with you know hip-hop or underground hip-hop uh so it's just going to be wild energy we've got sure. yeah, a ton of other people yeah, i said make sure on there i yeah. know uh, uh chris lavanch is one guy i know that i saw pop up i know him a little bit yeah um, oh my manic mind yeah. um Think is Inc. Um, man, I don't know. People, man. Yeah. I'll, tag, I'll tag the. I'll put the flyer maybe underneath in the comments sure. or something. Yeah, like absolutely, that, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. I mean, and, and so many people, man. Just uh, all those, all the bands, all the acts that are playing there. Kind of tangible goals, playing a show as a musician. Sure. You know what I mean? Just kind of uh, wherever it's gonna take you. You, you just got to get out there. You got to be live. You know, and that, so it's an yeah. awesome opportunity. It's uh, you know really community oriented, putting on a lot of local acts and stuff. Um, yeah. Super positive stuff going on, man, for sure. Love it, and you know, and it's 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 because all of these bands, all of these musicians, everybody part of even just this one show yeah. that's going on out here, all have their their process, yeah, their yeah. story, yeah. and you know, and they all collide at these shows. So like, that's why it's such a blast that's why it's such a yeah. good time the conversation is good the entertainment is good sure. um and you know just the overall vibe of it is absolutely is awesome man. So. absolutely man. very cool awesome so yeah, yeah uh wrap it up right there so thank you guys so. so much for tuning in um chat with us a little bit you got some comments you know whatever anything you'd like to talk about anything you'd like to hear more about uh give us a shout out um we'll throw a couple things on in the comments a couple things we talked about here today uh, seminars, local stuff going on. Keep you guys in the loop. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Peace.